Okay, question number 12 from P1, January 2019. The final question of this paper. The question um, tells us that the curve with equation y equals f of x, where x is greater than 0, passes through the point P, which has got the coordinates 4, minus 2. Given that dy dx is equal to 3x times root x minus 10x to the power of minus a half, Find the equation of the tangent to the curve at P, writing your answer in the form y equals mx plus c, where m and c are integers to be found. Okay, now, first of all, what they've given us here is dy dx, which is called the gradient function for the function y. So this is a, an expression here, dy dx, which will tell us the gradient of this curve at any point we want. So we don't need to differentiate anything to find the gradient here. It's already given to us in the, as the gradient function. So if I want to find the equation of the tangent to the curve at P, I need two things. I need to know the gradient of the tangent of the curve, and I need to know any point on the line, okay, which we know P is 4 and minus 2. So what we need to focus on first is how to find the gradient of the tangent. Now the gradient of the tangent to a curve is equal to the gradient of the curve at the point where you're trying to find the tangent. So basically what we need to do is take the point, the, the, the value of x equals 4 and substitute it into the gradient function dy dx which is 3x root x minus 10. Now 10x to the power of minus a half is like 10 over the square root of x. That's what that means because x to the power of a half is the square root of and negative means a reciprocal. So when I put that value of 4 in here, I have 3 times 4 times the square root of 4 minus 10 over the square root of 4. Okay, so that gives me 3 times 4 times 2. Okay, that's 6 fours of 24 minus 10 over 2, which is 10 divided by 2 is 5. Okay, that gives me 19. Okay, so I know the gradient of the tangent is 19. Okay, it's asked for the tangent, not the normal, so that's fine. If it was a normal, we put my minus 1 over 19. Okay, so there we have um, the gradient of the tangent, we have the point. So we can use the formula y, equal, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We know that your x1 and your y1 are here, and your gradient m is here. So y minus minus 2 is equal to m which is 19 times x minus 4 so okay so here we have um, y you know, next you're gonna have to expand this so be careful here y minus minus is y plus it's y plus 2 equals 19 times x minus that's going to give you 19 times 4 that's 40 plus 36 which is 76 and then we got to subtract 2 from both sides to left, leave us with y equals 19x minus 78. So there we have the answer for part A. Question number 12, part B. Um, we have to take this, what they gave us, which is the gradient function. And we have to use the gradient function and we have to use the point which they gave us which is 4 minus 2 in order to find the original function the original equation of the function okay from the, so the dy dx is the same as f dash x f dash x means the differential it's the gradient function so f dash x is equal to what i'm going to do i'm going to write this as 3x i'm going to try to i can't integrate this i can't integrate this unless i combine these terms together. You can't integrate them separately. So you've got 3x times x to the power of a half minus 10x to the power of minus a half. This part's fine. Now, that's f dash of x. For us to find the original function, we've got to do the reverse of differentiating. Okay, we got this by differentiating the original function. Okay, so it's like we have to work backwards to find what the original function is. So we have to integrate this. So first, I'm preparing it for integration by writing these as single term um, 
powers. I can't say 3x times x to the power of half. I have to combine these two powers together. That gives me 3x to the power of 3 over 2. To simplify it. 3x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 10x to the power of minus a half. Now it's ready for us to integrate. So the, the original function f of x is equal to the integral of f dash of x. So the integral of 3x to the power of 3 over 2. 3 over 2 minus 10x to the power of negative half. We're going to integrate that with respect to x and we'll get our original function. So now I have to add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So that will be 3x to the power of. Now if I add a, a 1 to 3 over 2 it's like adding 2 over 2 to 3 over 2 which gives you 5 over 2. And then I must divide by the new power so I have to divide by 5 over 2 which is actually the same as multiplying by 2 fifths, but I'll just write it down like this for now. And then I've got 10x. Now, I've got to add 1 to the power. The power right now is negative a half. If I add 1 to negative a half, it becomes positive a half. Okay, so minus a half plus 1 is a half. So I'm going to have to write to the power of a half and divide by the new power, which is a half. And then whenever we have this type of integral where it's indefinite like this, we must always put plus c because there could have been something here when you differentiated it, it became zero and therefore it's disappeared in the integral. So you must write the plus C, otherwise you will definitely lose a mark. Okay, now we have to simplify this and find what C is. So we can say this is f of x. So f of x is equal to, now as I said, dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by its reciprocal. So this is like two fifths times three which is 6 fifths. So you have 6 over 5, x to the power of three over 5 over 2, sorry. And then you're going to have 10 divided by a half, which is like 10 times 2, so it's minus 20, minus 20, x to the power of a half, and then the plus c. Now, we know that the point p is 4 minus 2. 4 minus 2. I can use this fact to find what the value of c is and therefore write the full equation. If I leave my answer like this, I will lose marks because I, I have enough information to find what c is. So now remember, this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate. So this is like the f of x part. So you say minus 2 is equal to 6 over 5. Now x to the power of 5 over, five over 2 is the sa same thing as saying the square root of x to the power of 5. Okay, so I'll just write the, the number instead of the x the number is 4 when x is 4 so I'll put 4 to the power of 5 the square root of 4 to the power of 5 minus and x to the power of half is the square root of x so that's minus 20 times the square root of, of 4 and then we got your plus c so now we can find what c is okay so you have minus 2 um, equals now that's 6 over 5 times this is going to be the square root of 4 is 2, 2 to the power of 5 is 32. Minus, and you got 20 times the square root of 4, which is 2. 20 times 2 is going to be 40. Plus C. So we'll end up with saying that C is equal to, you're going to have uh, 38 minus, um, that's going to be 180, 192 over 5. Okay, we can calculate what that is. You have 38, 38 minus 192 over 5, which gives you minus 2 fifths. So C is minus 2 fifths. Okay, so therefore, our equation in the end, f of x, can fill everything in now, is equal to You've got 6 over 5, x to the power of 5 over 2. Then you had minus 20x to the power of a half. And then you know that c is minus 2 fifths. Minus 2 fifths. And we have our answer. And we have finished this particular paper now. And I hope it was um, useful and beneficial for you. Thank you for watching.